Hello everyone, my name is Joe Diaz. I am a graphic designer and sign artist from Central Illinois. And today what I'm going to be doing is re-recording a webinar that I did a few weeks ago. And uh, this webinar is, uh, is, is mainly about my process when designing layouts. Um, layouts that might uh, be anything from logos to signs to uh, you know, business cards, websites maybe, um, murals. Um, the one thing that all these projects that we do at our shop have in common is they usually involve you know, lettering and, and type. So um, what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you a few of my uh, tips and tricks for um, creating custom lettering effects within CorelDRAW. So after sitting down and uh, discussing with the client um, their goals, um, what they hope to achieve with the design that they've hired us to create, um, I would, uh, you know, first thing I would do is once I uh, get into CorelDRAW here and start uh, brainstorming and laying out my design, is come up with a great lettering style that matches the theme and the look for that project. Um, so for example, let's say I was designing a, a logo that had a, a cartoon on it. Um, I may want to go with a casual lettering style for that, that uh, cartoony design. Um, you know, let's say the client hired us to design a wedding invitation. Um, I might want to go with a script. Maybe not this script, but um, you know, the script might be something that would be good for that. Um, so this is kind of just a small sampling of the different types of lettering styles that are out there. It's nowhere close to all of them, but uh, just just a few examples. Um, it's also important when picking out lettering styles and fonts um, to know how uh, the design is going to be used. So, for example, let's say I were designing a, a sign that needed to be read from pretty decent distance away. Um, I might want to avoid using a lettering style like this. Now this lettering might be great for a website or maybe even on business cards, but uh, may not be good for a sign that needs to be read um, from uh, a good distance away. So um, in our industry, in the sign industry, we have this thing called the squint test. And it's pretty basic. All you got to do is, once you get your design laid out, uh, squint your eyes and if you can't read the design it doesn't pass the squint test and that's basically to simulate you know reading something from far away and um, we do it all the time here at our shop and it's a great way to um, make sure that the design that you created um, does its job um, so this is just a few examples of some lettering styles that you can pick from now on the other hand there might be some type styles that you might want to avoid. Uh, and in my opinion, um, it's almost m more important that you understand why you should avoid these things rather than just knowing that you need to avoid certain things. Um, so for example, um, you know, the, this thick and thin lettering style, I might try to avoid that because um, the thinner parts of the lettering from a distance would uh, disappear and all you'd be left with are the thick parts and it would basically um, create something that would be um, very difficult to read from a distance. So I would avoid using a lettering style like that. Um, another good example would be something that's too condensed. Um, I have found that the space around the lettering is almost as important as the lettering itself. When people look at uh, lettering um, subconsciously they they kind of look at the border around the lettering and they take in everything all at once and uh, that includes you know the space around the lettering so if you have lettering that's too condensed what you actually do is you swallow up the space around the lettering um, even the parts within the lettering like the centers of O's or D's and so from a distance um, and even and not really even a, a far distance but uh, just sitting here looking at my monitor right now, um, this is extremely difficult to read. Um, 
and that's because the space around the lettering uh, isn't isn't showing up enough to to make this easy to read. So I would avoid using something that's too condensed like that. Um, you know, you got your classic all caps old English. Um, here again, just something that's extremely difficult to read. Um, all caps script. Um, scripts are designed to be um, used uh, as case sensitive lettering. So you have your capitals and your, your lower cases working together. And so when it's all capitals, it just doesn't quite look right. And so that's something I would avoid. Um, putting a script on an arc is also something that's very awkward and, and I sometimes see designers doing that and that's something that I think you should avoid. Script is already italicized um, and whenever something is italicized and then also following a curve like that um, it just looks awkward and it looks like it's kind of fallen off the hill here so I would try to avoid something like that as well. Another thing that's important uh, when when doing a layout or a logo or any type of design is uh, color and contrast and it plays a huge role in making a design um, you know legible or even you know um, drawing the viewers eye to a certain part of the design so here's a good example this is a design that I did a few years ago um, this is actually how it ended up um, you know how it was finalized um, but here's kind of an example of uh, here's you know the lettering is quite a bit lighter than how it ended up being and and I'm I did this to show you um, how color and contrast um, can draw draw the eye to certain parts of the design in this case since the lettering um, isn't high enough contrast off the background whereas the rocket on the other hand is real bright and vivid and and uh, there's a lot of contrast here um, from a distance or, or from anywhere really when the viewer looks at this design their eye is drawn towards the rocket first and then they'll look at the lettering so knowing that um, you can actually uh, kind of force the viewer to look at certain things in a certain order and the same can be said for um, lettering styles for example um, in this case the uh, this lettering is quite a bit larger and it's stands out a little bit more so you would look read this first and then you would read this second um, however uh, a lot of times when I do secondary copy I try to use less effects on the secondary copy keep it real simple and straightforward and the reason why is even though this doesn't stand out quite as much as the main copy I want it to be extremely easy to read so as soon as you're done looking at this you know your eye automatically drops down to this and it's just very easy to take in. So these are the kind of things that go through my head when I'm, I'm doing a layout. Um, now here's an example of, um, actually let me, uh, what I wanted to show you here, let's make this uh, contour darker here. Um, what I want to do here is show you what happens when you create an outline or a contour around lettering and if the contrast um, from that background and the outline um, are, are you know you got good contrast there but you don't have good contrast between the lettering and the outline um, just like in the example with the lettering that's too condensed um, you run into the same thing from a distance uh, people read this this lettering they look at their eye is drawn towards uh, this line here rather than the outline around the, the actual lettering and so what they see is this shape instead of the lettering and you know we lose this we lose this you know we probably lose these too so from a distance if you do your squint test it just looks like a blur you know just a random shape and it doesn't read well now in the same token um, if you look at this lettering here, um, right now it reads pretty well, but from a distance it will not read as well as this. And the reason why is uh, we've got high contrast between the outline and the background and the outline and the lettering. And so it's, you know, you've got two different 
the borders here that your eye is drawn towards and it's just a little more complicated than it needs to be and so um, you know whether it be subconsciously or just the way the eye takes in things it's it just reads a little bit harder than if you were to uh, have your outline be a lighter color closer to the color of the background your lettering be darker um, than what you have is something that's a lot easier to read and the same goes for this so if we were to make this a uh, lighter background that would read a lot better so I'm gonna get right into it and um, uh, show you how I created this here so the first thing you do is you go to your uh, text tool and um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take this, pull this down, and we'll work on this down here. Oops, ungroup that. Okay. So the first thing I would do is go to my text tool and type out the name of the company. choose a font. In this case I already know what font I use so I'm just going to redo that again. All right. Now um, if you go to the shape tool here the cool thing about the shape tool is you can adjust the kerning of, of your your words um, which is the kerning is essentially the space in between your letters and uh, even in between words too so um, in Corel Draw, when you select the shape tool uh, and you have your lettering selected um, and you click on this note here, you can adjust the space in between the lettering. Now, if you were to do that same thing but hold the shift button down on your keyboard, uh, it adjusts the space in between uh, words. Um, if we had two lines of text, If you were to use this here, it would adjust the space between lines. Um, then you can also grab individual letters and move them around however you want. Um, if you hold your shift key down, I'm sorry, your control key down, uh, you can uh, keep it on the baseline of the text. So I do that quite a bit. But uh, that's just kind of a quick little glimpse of what will happen if you use the shape tool um, when you have your text selected. So once I get my um, kerning the way I want it, then my next step would be to convert this to curves. And from here on out I can't, uh, I can't actually edit the, the, um, the font. It, it's no longer a font. Now it's uh, basically a shape and I would go on treating this as if it were any type of illustration, you know, if it was uh, an illustration of a car or a person or anything. Um, it is no longer lettering from here on out. So um, after I do that, I'm going to break this all apart. Uh, I'm going to lock my, my background. Uh, in this case, because I've got this color that I want to use for my background, um, what I can actually do is right click on the background and hit lock object and so now this this rectangle that I've created with this lighter background I can't actually select it on accident it's locked in place um, so now that that's out of the way what I'll do is select just this and I'm going to combine those letters back together and what that's going to do is that's going to take my um, you can't see it right now but the uh, if I go into wireframe you can see the center of my O there. So I'm going to go back into Enhance. So it's still there. Um, it's just not combined. It's actually two different shapes laying on top of each other. So I'm going to select both of those and select Combine. And I'm going to do uh, the R separately. And I'm going to do the same thing over here with the OAD. Combine that and do this R separately. Now what I'm going to do is select both R's and um, when I select both R's and I grab this node here I can actually um, 
scale them together at the same rate. I don't want those R's to be the same size like they are up here. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to hold my control key down and move this over just a little bit. Just keep it on that baseline there. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, hold the control key down. Now if I wanted to get really picky, what I could do is um, find a node here, create a rectangle, and do that, and then I'll just give it a color so I can see it. And so really what I'm paying attention to is this bottom line. Now I can move that over here. I do that a lot. I just create little squares or rectangles to kind of help me measure things out. Um, you'll notice another thing when I was doing that, um, so I'll create a rectangle here. Um, you'll notice that it kind of snaps to that node there and it says node. Um, I can also have it snap to the center. So like the center line here or the center of this line that makes up the top of that uh, D. Should say there we go midpoint, and uh, you know if you had a circle and you were to take your square, you can see it kind of snaps to the center of the circle or the quadrants of each of the circle, or you can have it you know snap to the edge of the circle, and um, I think by default that's turned on. Um, if that's something that you know, sometimes I don't like that on, so I'll turn it off temporarily. And you can do that a couple different ways. Um, the one way to do it is to go to View, and then go to Snap to, and you'll see Snap to Objects. But I like to use Alt Z to turn it to toggle it on and off. So sometimes I don't want things, you know, accidentally snapping to other things, and now I'll, I'll press you know Alt Z to turn that off, and then turn it back on when I'm ready for it again. So. So once I got that set up the way I want it, I'm going to combine it. And uh, now you'll see up here I've got these uh, kind of, um, this is to kind of illustrate it's got some movement to it. And that's really easy to do. Um, I use my free, or the freehand tool, which is one of my favorite tools. Um, and I'll give you kind of a quick little uh, showcase of how that works. When you, when you select the freehand tool and you are, uh, you click and hold down the mouse button, what happens is um, it basically follows your mouse movements. And so you can create abstract shapes like that. And I use that a lot for doing illustrations and to kind of, you know, if you have a tablet, uh, it may work even better for you. Um, when you're doing that, up here is the uh, freehand smoothing. And I usually keep mine pretty high. Um, just to give you an example, if you keep it low, here's what happens. It's very accurate on how it records your movement, almost too accurate. So, uh, but there may be some cases where you want it to be that way. Here again, if you're using a tablet, you may want it to be that way. But you can see it was it followed everything, and there's more nodes compared to something like this that's a little more smooth. So if we were to crank that up to let's say 90. It's going to do less nodes. Now the other thing you can do, I'm going to undo that a couple times. Uh, undo is control Z. Um, let's say we have all these nodes here. Uh, one thing you can do is, once you select your shape, uh, go to shape tool and draw a box around this. And this is going to select all those nodes that make up that shape. And you can hit reduce nodes and sometimes that will help or you can manually um, adjust the smoothness of your curve and uh, you know, that will do different things or you can go in and manually delete them this way too so you, know, you may not want to delete all those so that's I, I, I use the freehand tool in addition to the shape tool quite a bit to uh, draw custom shapes um, but going back to the freehand tool Remember how I showed you earlier, if you click and hold down the mouse button, it will follow your, your mouse movement. If you click once and let go, 
uh, you can see it pulls out a straight line. Now if you click again, uh, you've created or you've ended that line. So if I click once, pull out, click again, and then click a second time, right when I'm over top of that node there, it has basically connected my next line to that first line I created. And so you can create uh, shapes that way too. Um, sometimes when I'm doing illustrations, I'll do that. I'll, I'll rough out a, uh, the outline of whatever shape I'm creating by using straight lines because it's a real quick way of doing it. And then I will come in later and convert things to curves um, and adjust shapes that way and add nodes as I go. You can double click to add nodes or you can double click to remove them. And so you can um, kind of make your own shapes that way. So, back to our road rocket here. Um, what I'm going to do is click once, and click again, and then click once, and click one more time. And so I've created a little wedge here that I'll use at the top of this lettering. just going to duplicate that wedge. Again, that's Control-D. We'll duplicate. Maybe I'm going to get rid of my outlines here. Just have it be a black fill. And on this case, I don't want that touching the D, so I might shrink it a little bit. It's a little different from this. It's no big deal. It is up here, too. So it looks like I had that kind of like this down there. Maybe make those a little smaller. And so we got something kind of similar to that. It's not exactly the same, but uh, that's how I did it. And um, what I'm going to do now is weld all this together. So now by welding that to this shape, I've created, um, if I go into my wireframe, I've created a new you know, shape. This whole thing is just one shape. So if I were to give it a different fill color, you know, it, it you know, happens to the entire lettering there. So what I can do next is if I select my shape once, and I'm using my uh, pick tool here, and I select it a second time, now I've got my rotate and skew options available. So what I'll do is I'll just skew that up a little bit like that. And as you can see, we're very similar to what we have going on there. And so now what I want to do is uh, show you how I create this, um, this drop shadow here. So the first thing I would do is create a contour. And now the contour tool can be found in with these tools here. You've got your blend, your contour, distort, drop shadow. So we've got a lot of really great tools that I use quite a bit here. So I'm going to start with the contour tool. And you can either click and drag to create contours. Um, I like to do it manually. I like to select it once and then let me give it a color so that we can see it a little bit on the screen. We'll do red. That's not how I would, you know, I obviously wouldn't use red in this case, but just to, just so we can see what we're doing. Let's make that, let's go with 10 there. Okay. Now I'm going to break that apart. And so now I've got two different shapes. And all I did there was I right, right clicked on that red and then that break apart option was available there, so. Um, now what I'm going to do is duplicate this black, so I'll hit Control D, and I want to put this, well, let's make it a different color here, we'll make it blue for now, uh, I want to put this blue behind the red, and you can do that a couple different ways, you can go up to Arrange, and then Order, 
and you could say um, behind, and when you hit behind it gives you this arrow and then you could select the red. So that's one way of doing it. I'm going to undo that. What I like to do though is just, since I duplicated this black, I know it's only you know a couple levels above this red, so what I like to do is select the blue and hit hold down control and select page down and that moves it down a step and then once more and it moves it down one more step. Um, now at the same time uh, control page up would bring it forward. So I like to do that. And so what I would do is I'd take this and just stagger it off to the side a little bit so down and over a little. And uh, then I would come in and I would make this red, either the background color or maybe even a lighter color like a white, and then I would make the shadow here um, a very close color to the background but just darker. So maybe a, a tan, that would be a good color. Um, now you'll notice that um, I've started with this dark red color here, uh, and then I've got an internal contour. And so just like the contour I use to create the border, um, I can do the same to create an internal contour. So first, we're going to give it a dark red color. Um, let, me, uh, let me mix up a color. Here's a cool trick. If, if you've got a color, let's say we, we started with this really bright red, and I want to make that a dark red. Um, you know, I could add blue or I could just add black. In this case, I'm just going to add black. If you hold down your control key and then you select a second color, um, it will add that second color to the first color, just a little bit too. So we can hit the black a few times and we create a nice real deep dark red. And so that's a pretty close color to what we used here. Now what I'm going to do is select the shape one more time and I'm going to go to the contour tool and I am going to uh, select inside contour and what that's done is that's created a contour to the inside of the lettering. Now here again it's important that I keep the contrast um, on this line um, between the dark here and the light here. I want this to be the focal point, this to be you know where the eye is drawn to. So when I create this internal contour um, it's going to be a similar color to this, but uh, I might make it lighter instead of darker because I want this to be really dark against this being really light. So you can see I did that same thing here. Now you can also see this is a darker color and then it fades up, and that's really easy to do. Um, so I'm going to select this internal um, red here and select break contour group apart and now it's a separate shape and uh, I'm going to select the red here and um, if, you, if you select the interactive fill tool down here um, by default when you click and drag it's going to create a linear gradient and in this case we want it to go uphill so I'm going to Now I don't want this to be a real light color, I want it to be closer to this color here. So the really cool thing about CorelDRAW, and I think the newer versions added this, the uh, older versions may not have had this. Um, when you select your your fill color up here, you can either you know select one of the two colors here, or maybe add a third color if you wanted to, by just double clicking anywhere there. Um, but if we select this color here, I can either add a color like that, or I can go up here, add colors up here. But this is a really cool thing. There's an eyedropper tool built in to uh, this menu here. And I like to use that, just you know, select that, and then I select that uh, dark red that I mixed. Oops, let me do that again. I think I missed it. And as you can see, it added. And so we've created a nice kind of um, casual gradient uh, 
um, you know, nothing that's too intense. So we'll move back up here. Now you'll see that there's kind of a highlight here that's kind of to give it the illusion that this is a little bit dimensional and that the light is kind of um, hitting the, the edge of the lettering here. Now that's real easy to do. So what I do is I take my internal contour here and I duplicate that and let's just make that uh, yellow for the time being. Now I'm going to move that shape back um, here again with my snap to points or snap to objects uh, turned on. I'm going to go ahead and put that right over top of that first tool or that first um, lettering that we duplicated. And so now it's right on top of that. And I'm going to select that yellow uh, shape, the new shape that I've created. I'm going to select that and duplicate that again. And now this time I'm going to make it a, let's just make it a purple for the time being. And I'm going to move that down and over a little bit so that we've got a little bit of our yellow peeking through the top. Now I will select the purple shape and the yellow shape and I'll go up here to my um, these are your kind of, you've got weld, you've got trim, uh, you've got intersect, a lot of cool uh, tools along with your, your, your combine and then also your group tools will be up here, your groups and ungroups will be up here. Um, so what I'll do is select the purple, select the yellow, and I'm going to hit trim. And what that's done is that's trimmed out the, the yellow behind the purple. And so I'll delete the purple and now I'm left with that yellow highlight. Now what we want to do is make that a real bright red. So I'm going to select that red there. I may even add a hint of orange in there. Here again, if I hold down my control key and select orange a few times, maybe white once. That's created a nice red highlight, just like we have up here. Now, I'm going to show you how to uh, create this effect here. Um, it's pretty easy. Um, here again, we will use the contour tool once more. So go to your contour tool. And make sure you're selecting uh, this shape uh, and not your highlighted color that you just created. And again, we're going to do inside contour. And uh, I'm going to, that's probably good right there. Click on that. Well, you'll notice that it's it's got a gradient to it, and what it, you know, what CorelDRAW does is since I've created a gradient back here, um, it's decided that this should probably have a gradient too, and you can actually go in there and change what those gradient colors are. Um, in my case, what I'm going to just do is select that new shape that we that new contour. I'm going to break it apart, and so now I've got a new shape here. And I'm going to, uh, let's just make it, we're going to give it zero fill. We're going to get rid of the fill. And uh, I am going to give it a black outline instead. Um, now you can uh, apply outlines to shapes down here if you go to outline pen. And then you can uh, select a, a width of that, that line. And you can even uh, adjust your color here. Um, what I like to do is... If you if you're over here when you're with your color palette and you right click on any one of these colors, it will turn your outline to whatever color you right click on. So there's yellow, red, black. So I'm just going to do that for now, just so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, it doesn't need to be pretty. You can actually go in here and you know clean up some of these stray nodes that you don't want. I can do that here too. Here again, I use my shape tool, and uh, you know I can manipulate things the way I want it, and just kind of clean up some of that stuff. You know, you can get real picky with it, but uh, in this case, let's stay on subject here with this. Um, we've created an internal contour. And so now what I'm going to do is create a really long rectangle. And I'm going to 
to hit Control D, which will duplicate it, and I'm going to move it down, move it down just a little bit more. And now, if I hit Control D again, instead of it going way up here like it did the first time, it will do the same. It will move at the same amount of distance that my first duplicate command did. And so, what we can do is quickly create this. Row of or column of uh, uh, long rectangles here, and so I'm going to select all those, combine those, creating one shape. And uh, for the time being, I'm just going to create a blue, so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of my outline, and I'm going to place that over top of my lettering here, and then I'm going to select it one more time and I'll give you my skew commands here and I'm going to try to copy that same skew there So now that's laying over top. Now there's a couple different things you could do here. Um, one way is to select this blue and go up to effects and use the power clip tool, which is a great tool. And then you would say place inside container. And so we're placing this blue inside of this internal contour that I created. And so what that's done is snap that in there like that. Now if you wanted to go in there and actually adjust that, you can hold down your control key and select that shape and it will take you within that power clip shape and you would select this to stop editing and go back outside of it. You can also use these tools to edit the power clip or you can right click on there and edit power clip. So there's a lot of different ways to get in there. Um, so once you're in there, then we could, you know, select the color that we want. So that would be one way that we could do it. What I'm going to do now is extract my contents, and what that's going to do is that's going to take that, those blue lines that I made, and uh, bring it out of that power clip. Now I want to show you something real quick because this is a newer feature that they added in the upgrade. You'll notice that there's this X there that's kind of going through there. And that's what happens when you extract um, something from a power clip. Um, to get rid of that, what you want to do is right click on that shape and you want to go to frame type and select none. And that gets rid of that. That basically brings it back to being a regular shape. So if you ever run into that, that's the you know, right click and then you go to frame type. Here's another way you can do it. You can um, take our blue uh, bars here, select this shape, and then use the intersect tool. Then we would delete our blue shape, and what we're left with is our new shape. And so we can even delete this shape here. We won't need that anymore. All we're left with is that. And so what I would do then is um, use my eyedrop tool and select my color eyedropper and we'll grab this color here and select that like that and then we will go to our outline and get rid of our outline and we could add a gradient to that too if we wanted I think I did up here oh actually in this case I had it lighter that's pretty easy to do too all we have to do is select this color here and uh, here again, if we go down to our interactive fill tool, we click here once and we pull up. And then let's select this here, our eyedropper tool, and go with a lighter color. We can do it that way too. 
So it's not quite identical to what we have going up here, but it's, it's pretty close. So that is how I created that lettering there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a few other designs that I've created, and uh, I'm not going to show you how to, you know, design this whole thing, um, but I want to show you just a few little uh, tricks that I use when designing this. Um, this is a design that uh, is going to end up becoming a mural, um, but what we've got here is, uh, you know, we've got, um, you know, you, we've got several contours being used here. Um, this isn't quite the same as the, the drop shadow I, I showed you how to create um, in that last design. So I'll show you how to do that. And then uh, I've created little rivets in there. That's, that's pretty easy to do. Just a quick little uh, to show you how that works. I just create a circle and uh, I duplicate and then I duplicate again. And so I basically do that and it's, it's not um, super precise but because it's not um, since it doesn't make up the shape of the lettering and it's just kind of a, an extra element it doesn't need to be exact in fact you know if you think about how things are riveted together sometimes they may not be um, put in there um, super precisely so or you know precise so that's how I did that but uh, the first thing I'm going to do, sh do is show you how to um, have text go over an arc, and there's a couple different ways we can do that. So let's go over here, and um, we'll type in Corel Draw, and let's select a font that's somewhat similar to what So the first thing we could do is we could create a circle or an ellipse, and we'll end up deleting this, but um, just for the time being, this is what we're going to use. Uh, then you select your lettering that you created, and you go up to Text, and you go to Fit Text to Path. Uh, it gives you this arrow here with the, the A and then the curve. Uh, underneath it that lets you know that you have that turned on now you select your circle here and you see it kind of gives you a little preview of what it's going to do um, also once you get towards the center or the quadrant of this you know the top quadrant of this this oval it gives you that red bar and it kind of snaps um, also you can uh, pull it down and it kind of it, it almost creates a little contour temporarily um, for that lettering to go on. So that's one way to do it. Now once you've selected that, you'll notice that our lettering is following the curves, um, whereas in this case it's going straight up and down. Now that's very easy to do. When it's still in this state, what you can do is go over to here, text orientation, and select that, that middle option there. And you can see the other ones kind of uh, do different variations of that. Um, I like to do this one here. You know, I'm usually I'm either usually using this one or this one the way it you know does it by default. So I'm going to select this here, and from there you can uh, convert it to curves, and or you can leave it like this and um, add things to it. So that's one way of doing it. Another way uh, you can kind of create a similar effect would be to type out our lettering. Now once I've selected this font, it will actually be stored up here with my um, you know, most recent selected font, so I can quickly 
quickly grab the one that I just used last. The other thing you could do is, if you wanted, is um, go to your attribute side dropper tool, select this, and then apply it to that, and it will make it the same size too. And it doesn't have to. You can actually go in here and, um, you know, you know, tell it not to do certain things. So in this case, you know, if I had a a drop shadow applied to it or a power clip applied to it and I were to select this and apply it to that it would copy all those effects. I have a lot of these turned off um, but sometimes I'll turn them on if I need them on. So now from from here on out I, I can convert this to curves. I don't really need it to be uh, lettering anymore. Um, then I go down to where my contour tool is and I click on the little uh, arrow in the bottom corner and it gives me these additional tools and what I will be using is the envelope tool so if you select that it's created this uh, box around the envelope tool or around your lettering and um, you know the first thing I like to do is kind of get rid of these nodes because I won't need those and then if you grab the center of this line here and you pull it up you've created you know, a similar effect to what's going on down here. Now you can do the same thing to the top too, or you might want to just leave it like that. You know, that might make a nice little design. You know, you could do lettering across the top here in a straight line, and then underneath here do some sort of illustration, and that would make a nice little design. So that's how you do that. And you can do a lot of crazy stuff with this. I mean, you can really distort this lettering. So that's one way of doing it too. So now I was gonna—I I told you I'd show you how to do this. This is a little different than the drop shadow I did before. Um, so let's move into that. I'm gonna convert this to curves. I'm gonna delete our oval there, and I'm gonna start off by going to my contour tool. I use the contour tool a lot, people. It's a great tool for doing this stuff. Side contour, and I'll break that apart, and we'll make that a real light color for the time being. And right now, just uh, I'm going to give it an outline color, just because the next step is a little easier to visualize when there's a an outline to it. Um, so I'd recommend maybe doing that after you do this next step here. Now you go down to where your contour tool was again, and you select the arrow, and uh, you get your additional tools here. And I am going to use the extrude tool. Now extrude tool is pretty cool. I'll show you cool things, a few cool things with that. Um, if you kind of select here in the middle anywhere, we want to do it to this uh, gray shape, not the the black lettering. And I'm going to click, and if I hold my control key down, I can kind of make sure that snaps to. 15 degree increments here. So I'm going to go straight down with it. And as you can see, we've created a nice little effect there. Um, now, in this case, that's going a little farther back than I want. You know, that kind of looks like the Superman logo. And uh, I'm going to dial that back a notch. And you can change the depth. Kind of does it at five degree or five points, so um, I'm going to do something like that. That'll work. So now I've done that. I can actually break um, that apart, and what that's done is um, separated this from this. And um, you can, you know, if you wanted to get in here and you know light this in certain ways you definitely could so you could have this be real dark here and then this be light here as if it was you know the light was um, coming at an angle uh, in this case I am going to ungroup all of this and I'm going to weld it together and just create one shape now I'm going to get rid of my outlines I don't need those anymore that's what we've got now. Now I'm going to select both of these shapes and I'm going to um, use this uh, actually
actually I'm not going to use the create bound because uh, I'll explain why here in a second. What I'm going to do here is uh, duplicate this, just bring this down for a second so I can work on it, and then I'm going to weld this together. And so I've created a new shape um, from those two shapes. I'm going to bring that up here. I'm going to move that to the front by selecting shift page up and I'm just going to make that red for now. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to my contour tool and make sure it's outside contour and we'll do something like that. Now I'm going to break this apart, delete this shape and throw that to the back and we'll make that a light color. So now I've got three different shapes going on here for my um, my drop shadow. This shape here, this shape here, and this shape which is the same color as this first shape. So what we can do there is we can go back to our uh, extrude tool and click there and pull down. And here again, if we, this is why I say if we, if you give that an outline, it kind of allows you to see what's going on a little bit better. Now we've got some nodes here that's creating these. If I go into uh, my shape tool and select this, you can see these nodes are creating that there. In this case, it's not going to uh, matter because we're going to end up welding that all together. But if you were to like I said, if you were to be given these different um, segments, different colors, uh, you might want to, you know, address that. So I'll go back in my extrude tool and check my depth, make it a little bit smaller. And one more time, I will break this apart. As you can see, now they're separate shapes. Group it and weld it together, and we'll go with the dark gray there, or medium gray, I should say, and get rid of my outlines. And so that kind of created a nice little stair step effect, which is the same thing that I did here. And as you can see, you can create internal contours. So this would be a, an internal contour. Here's one more. Um, like I said, just made a little little circles and added those where I thought you know it looked best. Uh, just like I did the stripes before in the first example I showed you, I did the same thing here, but uh, I followed the curve of the lettering. So I kind of created these two um, you know lines here. And uh, that's how you do that. Um, while I'm talking about the extrude tool, I want to show you one more thing. Let's say you had, uh, let's just, let's make a star. Oops, let's make a five point star. Let's keep it simple. And we'll convert that to curves. Um, let's say we our extrude tool and uh, we went straight back with it like that. Now what you can't see is it's actually it, it's there but it's you know it's behind this and I'll get to that here in a second. Now what you can do is you can either uh, click on this a second time and it gives you these uh, new uh, new options here to, to rotate this like a 3D shape adjust our depth just like we were able to before and so you can kind of manipulate it manipulate it like it were a, um, you know you were using a 3d program um, or you can do it manually um, by you know selecting how much you want to rotate it so manually inputting your values is another way you could do it So 
So that's kind of a fun thing. Another thing you can do is, you know, apply gradients to your um, your drop shadow. There again, before I was telling you about how you need to watch out for those things, this might be uh, a good time to do that. Um, you can add bevels. Oops, that's a little too intense. show the bevel only if you wanted to. It's kind of a, another cool effect that you can add to lettering too. You, you know, you just, you don't, it's not just uh, stars that you can do that with, any shape you can do that with. Um, and then you can actually add lighting. And this is really cool. So you can kind of go here and move your lights around. And as you can see, it uh, just like a 3D program, it will, uh, can add multiple lights and change the intensity of the light even. So that's a very cool, um, you know, part of the extrude tool. It's very powerful. Allows you to do some really cool stuff, um, especially with lettering. All right, I want to show you another really cool. Uh, in this case, I didn't, I didn't actually uh, do that for this design, but uh, show you a little little trick that I use sometimes. Um, I'm going to select this outer contour here and go to my contour tool and go to ins in inside contour and right now it's a red color. It doesn't matter what color it is. I'm actually going to get rid of the fill and I'm going to break that contour apart and I'm going to get rid of the fill and I'm going to go to my uh, outline pen tool Oops. and go up to outline pen and I'm going to give it let's just go with hairline for now I'll adjust that later but here's where the really cool uh, part comes in where it says style you can actually select some of these dash lines here and you can even um, design your own dash line if you wanted to by hitting edit style you can kind of create your own custom dash line um, but in this case, I want to keep it pretty simple. And uh, let's go with this one here. And I will select OK. And the reason why I do that is that kind of looks like this is a, you know, a piece of fabric and it's stitched onto the background. And I've done that in a few designs and people seem to really like it. So um, we can adjust the size if that's a little too big. There you go. And what I would probably do is uh, make it a, a color that's pretty similar to the background color that it's on, um, but not exact. So maybe something a little darker like that. You know, let's say you had this as like a blue jean color. Let's go with like a dark navy. to convert our line to a golden color, you know, that might be something you might see on blue jeans. You know what I mean? When you, uh, you look at the stitching on blue jeans, a lot of times it's that gold color. So that's just kind of a, a cool little trick I like to use every once in a while. Now in this case, I've got the B going in front of this uh, banner here, um, or ribbon I should say. and. Uh, I'll go into wireframe to show you how that's done. You can see the shape actually goes in front and then I basically just uh, trimmed out this part of that shape so that the banner looks like it's running in front of it. It actually isn't. If I move this down just a little bit, you can see it's not that it's moving in front of it, it's just this has been trimmed out. And so it gives it the illusion that it's running behind this part of the lettering and then in front of that part of the lettering. So that's how I did that. This is, um, here again, the secondary copy. A lot of times I don't go as crazy with the secondary copy as I do with the primary copy. And that's definitely the case right here with Aeroshell. Um, 
and even this is you know a little bit more than aeroshell but it's still simple compared to what's going on up here here's another design I did um, using those same techniques um, it's just a little bit more um, you know as you can see I talked a little bit about color and contrast before this is a case where we're not really dealing with color it's all black and white and you can see um, all this is actually power clipped in there so I can go in there and edit power clip and you can see that's what's doing that and we've got you know contours and drop shadows and extrudes and all sorts of different things going on here um, but the important thing is that um, there's a lot of contrast between the main part of the lettering and the drop shadows in the background I want the eye to be drawn to this line here so that this is easy to read from a distance or easier to read same thing goes for this lettering here. So that's an example of, you know, using those same techniques, what you can do with that. Here again, we've got, there's those bars that we created before. Um, here's that, uh, that bevel I showed you in the first design. design. This bevel that we created here, um, if you do the same thing um, but in reverse have it uh, um, this way and then you make it a darker color it actually kind of gives it the illusion that uh, instead of there being a 3D shape popping forward um, there's a you know it's actually popping backwards so it's it's almost like there's an outline here that's raised up and then this is um, this falls down a little bit deeper so you kinda have to think in 3D here's the same drop shadow that I showed you how to, in, how to do in the first example um, but what I did was I created some kind of uh, abstract lines and then trimmed it out and kinda created that effect so here again using those same tools I've created that um, and as you can see, you can take it down to a one color version and it still works well. And uh, for any, anybody who's new to design, I would definitely recommend um, when you're starting out, um, I mean even when you're, you know, when you've been at it for a while, I still even design this way. Design in black, if you design things in black and white first, um, when you start adding color, and you know you're you're keeping color and contrast in mind while you're doing it. Um, when you add that color, if the design is uh, works well as a black and white design, when you add the color, the design will work well um, with the color too, as long as you use color in the right way. I'm going to show you uh, one more little thing here. Um, here again, this is you can see the the bars, we've got um, that bevel, um, we've got gradients going on here, we've got extrudes going here, um, but here's one thing, this is uh, kind of a, a bevel um, effect, a uh, prismatic effect um, that you can do a couple different ways. Uh, one way is when I, and I, when we created the uh, extrude from earlier, um, let me uh, get this. Uh, I'll go to this font again. Um, when we use the extrude earlier, some of our extrude tools you can remember we had bevels up here Oops. and so you can kind of create bevels that way 
the problem with using this tool to do that is your bevel won't go to the center. So as you can see when I first created that bevel it was real abstract and all over the place. Um, so you can see if you the closer you get to the center um, where the angle is too great like where this A is here you can see it kind of does things like that. So um, it's not the best tool for um, doing a bevel that goes to the center um, but it is good for doing bevels that go around the outside and so you know you could light that a certain way and create some really cool effects like so so that's one thing the other thing you can do is go up to tool I'm sorry windows dockers and let me see where do we have it here um, you can see there's a bevel tool right here and I've already got mine uh, turned on so I'll pull out my dockers here and I'll go to bevel and make sure your two center is selected and hit apply and we've created a bevel now it's not perfect um, anytime you've got software trying to do um, something like this, it uh, doesn't do it um, perfectly, but uh, it kind of gets you in the ballpark. And it also depends on what font you use. I mean, this may not have been the best font to, to showcase this, but um, on the other hand, it's, it's good to show you that uh, it, it doesn't work for some fonts. But it does get you in the ballpark. Um, the other problem with using this bevel tool here is this is a bitmap effect this isn't actually vector so um, it looks like it's vector and when you export it you know it looks really nice but I can't actually go in here and manipulate these lines at all um, you could try using uh, Corel trace to trace this um, but what I like to do is use my freehand tool and trace it manually by using the the bevel um, docker effect as a guideline I can create vector bevels and so I would go through and I would uh, do it that way and then I would fix areas that weren't quite right like this I would I would make make changes there um, so to show you going back to here I did the same thing here now instead of having the bevel go all the way up through the design I actually kind of created an effect where I ended it halfway down and then did that effect up there um, so if I go if I hold down my control key I actually have the bevel effect power clipped within this shape so I'm going to hold down the control key and you can see I've created my bevel effect in there and then I've um, given it gradient colors to simulate the light hitting it in certain ways. So if we go into wi wireframe you can see these are all vector shapes with fountain fills, gradient fountain fills. And so that's how I would have done that. Here again, um, straight lines, lots of uh, contours, lots of bevels, um, gradients. Here's another example of a nice little bevel effect. And that in a nutshell is how I like to do you know some of these more complicated designs um, you know creating really elaborate um, lettering effects but still focusing on keeping them um, easy to read and uh, paying close attention to my contrast and colors. Now, that's not to say every design should be done this way. I've got a few logos that I've done in the past here to show you a few examples. Um, sometimes you don't have to go and use all the effects. Sometimes just um, 
staying grounded and, and keeping it simple might be the way to go. Um, this is an example of, you know, we've got our little uh, bevel effect, a drop shadow effect, but that's it. No gradients, um, nothing that would be hard to produce. Um, in our industry we work with vinyl a lot, so this could um, be created in vinyl if we wanted to. Or if you were to screen print this, this would be easier to screen print than, you know, a design that was all over the place. Here's an example of, you know, a design. It's very clean and corporate looking and it doesn't have a lot of effects. It has All it has is a slight um, gradient. One thing I could have done here is create a rectangle here, select both of these, intersect, oops, this is all grouped together, let me ungroup that real quick. Ungroup that. So select the, letter, the rectangle first, then the lettering, and then we'll do intersect. Oops. Man, I need to weld all that together. Apologize. Okay. Select the rectangle, select the lettering, and intersect. Now what I've got is half of that lettering there. What you could do with that is adjust our gradient a little bit. And what we've done is a real subtle effect that kind of gives it the illusion that the lettering is has some reflective properties and it's reflecting a, a horizon line. Um, so that's just kind of a, a quick little effect I could do to and still maintain that corporate look. Here again, something very simple. We've got a drop shadow, that's it. Contours, drop shadow, very simple. So a lot of times you'll have logos that are pretty simple um, when it comes to you know these effects. Here we've got quite a bit more going on. This is a little more complicated of a design. Um, I talked a little earlier about matching the lettering to the illustration. This is a good example of that. This illustration's got a little bit more detail, um, so I would want the lettering to have detail too just to kind of work well with that illustration. And, uh, very simple. No effects at all. Real corporate. Here, I'll show you one more thing. Um, you can see this lettering looks kind of distressed. And that's something that's pretty easy to do. So, for that actually. Um, I'll convert that to curves and uh, a real easy way to do it would be to select your shape tool and just double click every once in a while and kind of click it and move it around. Um, maybe even add some curves here or there and you can kind of create distress looking lettering that way. Now another thing you can do is if you go to your um, if you go to your shape tool here you have a rough and brush option you select that gives you this tool here and you can actually use that and kind of rub it over parts of the lettering here and you can kind of see it sort of gives it a, a rough effect so that's that's how I might do something like this. Here's that real subtle um, reflect effect that I showed you how to do um, on that design uh, lower down on the page here. Uh, I try not to do cute things with lettering. Uh, a lot of times when you do that, it makes things harder to read. In this case, I I kind of broke my own rule. Um, but I think it still reads well and because the imagery says pools um, it helps illustrate that point so um, I broke my own rule there and uh, did that. I want to show you one more here. 
I did a tutorial um, which can be found on the Corel Draw, or I'm sorry, the Corel.com website. If you go to Corel.com, um, there's a tutorial page on there. And uh, if you go to the Corel Draw section of the tutorials, you'll find a tutorial that I created um, for Corel Draw that uh, shows you how to create this ribbon effect. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, it's it's pretty cool uh, effect that you can do, and um, uh, like I said, if you go to that website and check that out, uh, uh, let me know what you think. So, um, I think that's about all I can uh, uh, get to today. Um, please uh, let us know what you think in the comments below, and uh, I'll hope to see you again um, with another tutorial. Thank you.